Welcome back to BSR TV for the iRacing British Touring Car Championship Round 17 from Laguna Seca with me in the commentary box Chris Cohen and uh, hopefully joined once again by Matt Dalton. An exciting first race but we've seen better to be honest haven't we Matt? Yeah, I, I'm still sat here with a large needle stabbing myself in the leg to see if I'm awake or not to be honest that was a bit of a We've had much better races than that, and I think possibly we've been a bit spoiled lately, maybe. Oh good, the overlay software has just given up on us, so we'll just get back in there and uh, start that one back up. Apologies for that. But we we did see some uh, interesting overtaking. I mean, it was very clean on the first lap, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was remarkably well behaved, actually. Everybody ran the first corner okay. Still managed a couple of incidents in the second corner, unfortunately taking our current champion Ellis Stevens out. Which is unfortunate for him, and we lost Robert Fagg as well, but uh, having, sp having spoken to Rob at the end of the last race, we understand it, you know, it was a mistake from him. He wasn't collected by anybody, which is, you know, not ideal, but you'd be happier with that than he would have been if he was punted off. Nothing too much for the stewards to report on, shall we say, and uh, a few mistakes, but nothing major from really any of the drivers. We understand uh, Tom Stanley's rapid drop in positions was due to his disqualification, well, his, his stop-go penalty, shall we say, for uh, cutting the corkscrew. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I did wonder. Or well, I thought it was either could have been that, or he could have... Uh short fueled the car. Some of these guys do run their qualifying setups on very, very little fuel and then forget to fill it back up for the start of the race. Well, there is that, uh, but in this case we have heard from Tom. Uh, thanks to Tom for filling us in on that one, and it's because, uh, yeah, unfortunately the corkscrew was not one of the corners that you want to cut, but it's one of the corners that's the easiest to cut. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a number of those like that here. I think the... Um, this track is one of those ones where the the apex of the corner you can see on each one is where there's a, a red curb, and quite often, especially in this car, the quickest way to get around those corners is actually to put the two left hand wheels over that curb, because it's if you hit it, it can throw the car off and, and actually roll you. Um, so quite often they they're putting the inside wheels over the on the inside of that curb to help drag them around the corner, and it's very very easy to pick up a, uh, a slowdown penalty therefore. You have to say though, you do get some rather large text saying "slow down" that uh, warns you not to <laughs> how to avoid those penalties. So, uh... yeah, it can be in the heat of the moment. It's difficult to to pay attention to those and not on to the the guy or or girl right in front of you. Uh, Rob Burton is out on track for BSR TV. There uh, goes any peace and quiet. Good to see a BSR TV car out on the track. Uh, he has scored some points in this championship so far, not not one of the front runners usually, but uh, usually good enough to provide some decent entertainment. Absolutely. We uh, we do love Rob, bless his gotten socks, he's, uh, he's given us some given us some incidents in the Skippy race the other night as well, and uh, I don't think anyone's going to forget his trench run through the, uh, the start of the third race at Lime Rock, where uh, he managed to go underneath flying cars left, right and centre. Yes, and if you uh, that was Summit Point, uh, if you wanted to check Sorry, that one Summit out, Point. that's uh, Season 3 of the British Touring Car Championship, Round 9, where there was a rather large incident from the start, and well worth watching that one back. It's on the YouTube channel for anyone that wants to watch it. Also, uh, you touched on the Skip Barber series, which is the other series that BSR TV covers regularly, which is on a Monday night from about 8.30 in the evening. Some open wheel racing, and a massive range of abilities right from the very top level and interestingly Matt uh, we came across the timings for the top 25 drivers from Alton Park in the Skip Barber on the iRacing service and three of the guys from the race on Monday were actually in the top 25 across the entire service Wow I, I think that um, probably comes as less or more of a surprise than it should as we've seen the the uh, the level those guys are at in that that race session is um, if the top guys in that are very 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 quick. So we should just cover. Uh, we've got about a minute to go before we head to the grid, but we covered the way that the um, the iRacing uh, penalty system works for cutting corners, and that is that 
we'll, we'll, you'll hear us refer to things which are called slowdown penalties, and that is to indicate that you must slow the car down on the track yep. just after you've cut the corner, and you get a limited amount of time to perform the slowdown, and if you don't slow the car down, then you will get the black flag. It can vary as to how long you get to do that, and in Tom Stanley's case, obviously, he, for whatever reason, didn't notice that the slowdown was in effect, so it didn't slow the car down enough, and uh, the, the, the iRacing service gives you an automatic black flag for that and sends you into the pits for a, uh, a stop-and-go penalty. Uh, well, it can be longer yep. than that as well, can't it? it? It can be one of the most infuriating things in the entire world because depending on which corner it is and how much you've cut, it will vary the penalty in its own special way accordingly and you never quite know how much it's going to do. And, and obviously when you've got to give some time away yourself, you're trying to give away as little as possible. So some of the guys will immediately slow down to an almost crawl to get it out of the way as quickly as possible. Others will try and be a bit too clever with it and just ease off a little bit and gain it back that way but uh... one of the things that's important to do of course is not to cause a crash because the person behind you doesn't necessarily know that you've got a slow down penalty so don't just stamp on the brakes and uh, screw everybody else around you no I believe the uh, the race steward would have words with you for that one as well you don't want to get in trouble with the automated penalty system and the manual penalty system that would be a disaster it would Unless you want to sit on the touchline for the following week, in which case, feel free. <laughs> well, round 17 is about to get underway. I've got a feeling things are going to hot up in this race a little bit. We've got a few guys out of position. Ellis Stevens and Robert Fagg, and uh, also Tom Stanley. Are much lower down on the grid than they'd like to be, and much lower down than their performance would indicate, so we should see some exciting overtaking from those guys. The front... Uh, three on the grid are unchanged from the previous race, so Cepilovsky lines up on the inside for the pole position. Katz in the eBay motors on the outside at the front row. Cepilovsky still blinking just a little bit. Uh, Richard Wilde is just behind Cepilovsky on the inside. Simon Field takes fourth place from Smolensky, and he is on the outside just behind Andreas Katz. So we're just waiting for the lights to come on. Predictions for this race, Matt, just in a couple of words. Not sure. There you go. <laughs> Not sure. As the lights come on for round 17 here at Laguna Seca, we are underway once again. No dive down the inside. Oh, a slow start from Simon Fields. Simon Fields very slow to get away there. Everyone's going round him. And uh, oh, Burton almost cutting up one of the dino jets right at the back of the grid there. Oh, well, Fields lost a lot two. of places. As, a, as Nick McCarran goes very wide on the left hand side of your picture there and just keeps it under control. Everyone's clean so far. Burton has made up a few places in that BSR TV themed car, so good for him. But out of the front, Wilde is off the track. Richard Wilde, what's happened to him? Well, he's, he's brought it back under control, but now he's under attack from Smolensky as well. And everybody's made it through the first three corners. Well, that's, that's almost unbelievable, isn't it? It's unheard of. It, that's unheard of in this series, yeah. Smolensky, meanwhile, has Adam Terry right behind him, and uh, Simon Field is uh, down to the seventh position already as we come through turn six for the first time. Laidler on two wheels. Laidler's going to... Well, he's survived that. He's going to come under threat now, Russell Laidler, from Dan Hunt. Dan Hunt trying to go down the inside for the corkscrew, thinks better of it. There's a drive cool car down the outside. That's Andy Dalton. Nicks the position from Dan Hunt. What a oh, cheeky move that was. Uh, Dan that Hunt's going to take cheeky. it back. Is he? No, he's not. So, uh, oh, and uh, Hunt's just contact, slid it out. Is that Was that a little bit of contact there, perhaps? I think there was a little bit, yep. Let's oh, and there's carnage behind there. Let's have another quick look on the replay. Is that McCarran? We'll just come back to that one. Yeah, just a little bit of contact there has put Dan Hunt off the track. And, uh, well, there's, a, there's an Addison Lee off the track as well. What's happened there? I don't think it is. Is it McCarran? I'm not sure. Maybe we can come back to you on that one. No, it's not Nick McCarran. Still leading the race. Scott Malcolm running down in 21st at the moment. And look, just look up, up ahead of that. Aaron Mullen round the outside there trying to take on uh, Stephen McGarrity. McGarrity's just not having any luck at this circuit. He's doing well in the championship but not very well at this particular circuit. That's Benjamin Gregory just behind Mullen as well. It was uh, Julian Janowski who got taken out by a, uh, a recovering Dan Hunt. 
and we cut to the replay just a little bit early there unfortunately so maybe we can go back and have a, a quick look at that uh, let's see if we can go back just a little bit further on the replay tape so Janowski is coming around uh, the left hander Dan Hunt just goes off there we just see it oh, oh and he's back on the track but well yeah that's not really the place to rejoin I don't think and Janowski has been destroyed he's, uh, he's well off the track there and is that well he keeps it out of the barrier and there's another collision there with Dan Hunt um, the stewards are going to be all over that one unfortunately for Hunt just yep. not his day Janowski now running in 22nd position and Rob Burton making the challenge from 23rd he'll want to get around Janowski but you have to feel like Janowski's quicker yeah Rob actually uh, made a bit of a haulix of it up in the corkscrew and lost it and uh, had to reset himself back to the pits so he is literally recovering Meanwhile, Stellion is determined to make this a, a snore fest for us at the front. And uh, well, we're we're focusing on this battle, battle at, the, isn't he? at the back at the moment because because Burton's under attack from Tom Stanley. And well, how does Stanley get so far down? He was started at the back, wasn't he? Not behind Burton. Oh Burton no! Is, is I, no, I tell you what's happened there. I'm just looking at that again. It was Robbers mm. made a horlick of it at the uh, at the corkscrew, and uh, Tom Stanley's just got caught up and had nowhere to go as Rob spun in front of him. So we're on board now with Tom Stanley, and he'll need to get past Robert Burton as quickly as possible. And, uh, well, we get what we get at BSR TV. We don't get the all-star drivers, let's just put it that way. So Burton will be under a lot of pressure here. I'm not sure I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I like what you're trying to say there. <laughs> I'll have you know the only reason I'm not in this. I don't want to embarrass Mr. Chapolevsky. Quite. <coughs> Quite. <laughs> So Burton still holding on to that 22nd place. A little bit further up the field, uh, Laura Bond is chasing down Andy Dalton for the 8th position. Laidler is in 7th, Field is in 6th, Terry is 5th, Smolensky's 4th and the front 3 are once again on 3. Yeah. But just, they might as well just agree beforehand where they're going to finish at this rate. It's a little bit Formula One at the moment, isn't it? With uh, Sebastian Chepelevsky dis Vettel disappearing off at the front, and uh, <laughs> the other guys trying to carry on behind him. I wonder what happened with Laura Bond. Is she was um, running up behind Adam Terry at one point? That she uh, may have been mugged by a reco recovering Simon Field. So Field now putting Terry under significant threat. Terry doing very well in this race, though. He's in fifth position. That's the orange CQR Fanta of uh, Russell Laidler just behind there. He's got into the seventh place. Terry's got wide. It's not quite wide enough to give Field the advantage though, is it? Field's gonna have to tuck in behind. Terry's got very defensive, but that is a that's not a straight line entry to that corner. So Smolensky's just up in front of them. Field's trying to go around the outside here and not gonna make that work, but might get a quicker exit. He's trying to line him up, isn't he? It's one of those tracks, as we said, it's a very technical, twisty little track, so you have to kind of plan a move almost two or three corners in advance. But it is, it is good to see Simon Field back at the front. He's uh, been struggling a bit the last couple of weeks and hasn't been quite where he belongs. And, and It's I, good to see him back on the pace. Personally, been racing a bit in the same the same races, not necessarily the same league with Simon Field. And he's one of those guys that you just get into a race with and he's two seconds a lap faster than you and you just have no idea how he's doing it. But he is consistently fast and he can show that as well. Despite a very poor start in this race, he's recovered well. He's in the uh, sixth position, and Adam Terry is going to have his work cut out keeping Simon Field behind him, put it that way. Yep, he's uh, I think Simon is going to give him the monster treatment at some point, yeah. So not only has he got the toe, he's got the pace, and he's also got a face full of the boot of that uh, Adam Terry Bianco car in front of him. He needs that opportunity though, but they're both gaining on Smolensky, aren't they? And do you think perhaps Field might want to sit behind Terry, knowing that he's gaining on Smolensky? Yeah, I think at the moment he uh, that's certainly an option, although he's... He's having to lift quite considerably <laughs> there. <laughs> yes, so me. much more speed through that uh, corner there. Through turn six, then through the corkscrew, loses a bit of time there, but uh, you have to feel like... Uh, he, he sh perhaps should be getting more, a little bit more aggressive, do you think? I mean, we're... We're not seeing much overtaken in this race either, are we? 
No. Um, I think perhaps the stewards need to have a look at the uh, the organization next time, and, and maybe maybe Laguna Seca should be avoided at all costs. Because of the incident limit. Uh, just because it's, for lack of a better word, crap. Um, <laughs> it's it's right. not a track okay. that promotes racing, is it? Brilliant for bikes, not so much for cars, it would appear. And Simon Field's still right on the back of Adam Terry. He has to make the move soon, doesn't he? He doesn't want to get trapped behind Adam Terry for too long. Nope. I, I wonder, Laura Bond, no back to ninth. I wonder, did she, was she maybe uh, misleading us a little in the interview when she said she wasn't going to aim for P10? She's got a lot of pace. I think, you know, reverse grid for the last race, that'll put her in second. She's going to be, uh, she can get in front. She's going to be difficult to stop there. It's not a it's not a track that encourages overtaking clearly. So you you know you'd have to think she'd have a a decent chance of picking up a win there. Well, you might so be right. Field past Andrew, Adrian, Adam Terry there. I was just looking at the performance um, of those of those cars and Laura Bond in particular. But let's go back and have a look at that overtaking maneuver from Simon Field. Because uh, just coming on the replay now through uh, turn four. And again, gets a very good exit from turn four. The left-hander from turn five is a very tempting place to go. Oh, overtake. great move! Down the inside at turn five, just sells him the dummy. He's tucked behind so many times that uh, I think uh, Adam Terry was expecting him to tuck in again. That is a classic selling him a way to sell him the dummy, isn't it? That's uh, Nigel Mansell, Nelson Piquet, at Silverstone in '87. I think that was, wasn't it? Good memory there. And Simon Field is now 1.4 seconds behind Alexander Smolensky, and that's going to come down. That's already come down from where it was before. So we'll keep an eye on that one. And some other battles going on the track at the moment. Stephen McGarity has Stephen Hefford right behind him. Ellis Stevens is just up in front. Hefford thinks about making a move, just taps the back of McGarity there, and no damage done. No damage done, but that's Robert Fagg just behind them, and he's no slouch, so he'll want to get through. Hefford's going to have to get around McGarity before he gets swamped by Fagg here. Yep, Ellis Stevens having a bit more of a, uh, a better recovery than Robert Fagg as well. He's up to 13th. And he's that eBay Motors car you can just see at the top of your picture there. This three-car train is is one... I'll be interested to see the result of this because McGarity's fast. Team orders. McGarity has been fast, but not at this circuit. Russell Laidler, Andy Dalton, and uh, Laura Bond have closed up quite nicely. That's probably the uh, the battle on the track where the action is at the moment. Was with those three. Well, if you're Russell Laidler and you see Laura Bond coming in your mirrors again, you must be thinking. What have I done to deserve this? Because we saw him overtaken on the final lap last time out. And he's under threat now again from both Andy Dalton and Laura Bond. Kai Barker in the other drive call is a little bit far behind. Uh, Rob Burton, meanwhile, is out. I assume he's been disqualified. Tim Mawson out. Dan Hunt out. Julian Janowski is out. <laughs> Aaron Mullen is out as well. So a few drivers falling foul of the incident limit. Tom Stanley meanwhile is up to the 18th position. He is now challenging on the outside in the hairpin for uh, 17th from Benjamin Gregory. Goes for the cutback. It's a big long drive down the start finish straight and uh, he should be able to make this pass stick. Maybe he'll go for it down into turn one. We'll wait and see and see what happens as they uh, hit the brakes. He's staying behind for the moment. Oh, just tucking on the inside of the second part of the corner. Sorry, turn two. Oh, just makes Andreas it work. Andreas Katz is uh, hung up behind Scott Malcolm at the moment in P2. That's allowed Richard Wilde to catch back up. What an interesting place. Oh, and, well, Katz went for the overtake, but Malcolm's not letting him through there, and, and he was right to stay on the same line through the corner. Malcolm surely has to go wide at the hairpin there and let these guys through. He's not done it, but he's pulling there over he now. Goes. Okay, so held up a little bit, and that's, well, that's handed the race to Chapelewski, even if it wasn't handed to him already, surely. Yeah. Well, Scott Malcolm not, slow, well, he slowed down enough now. Okay, so I didn't know if he was going to slow down enough to let Richard Wilde through as well, but Wilde's right on the back of Katz. Who knows what's going to happen, but 
if I had to put money on it, it's going to be these three finishing in exactly the same position once again. Simon Field, meanwhile, has not made the same impact that I thought he might on the back of Alexander Smolensky. He's still a second and a half adrift. Yep. I think maybe we need a DRS button. <laughs> well, that would certainly make things more interesting. Uh, it, it possibly is just the circuit that we're dealing yeah, with here. Yeah, I think here. it is. It has to be. I mean, we've seen, you know, this is a series where we've seen some fantastic racing in previous weeks, and... Well, let's this stay where the action seems to be. Uh, let's stay where the action is exciting, which is the seventh place battle at the moment, because this is Russell Laidler leading this train of cars, and Andy Dalton and Laura Bond are both are both quicker. They are just checking the lap times there, and they are both quicker, but they can't find a way around. And Dalton's going to have to make a move because there's two laps to go. Not a lot in it. Richard Wiles all over the back of Andreas Catcher as well. Second place. I mean, the thing is, that these guys, there's nothing in it in between them all in terms of pace. It's so this, you know, it's always going to be a challenging one to get past each other at the best of times, but this just seems to be a track that is, as we say, Laura is saying in the interview and after race one, it's the, the straights are not especially straight, which just means that it's very difficult to to make a move. Well, Richard Wilder try, certainly trying everything, mind, isn't he? Well, we're just focusing on that battle with Layla at the moment, and, um, well... Bond's dropped off a little bit now, but says, uh, oh, she's got a problem. Laura Bond's got a problem. So what's happened to Laura Bond here? She's dropped. She's dropping places. She's slowing down. Is that a fuel issue or another engine issue? Uh, I'm not sure. It could be fuel. I wouldn't have thought so, though. I mean, if you had enough to finish the first race, you should finish this one. Maybe she was just anchoring for P10, but it. Well, she's got she's P10 still running now. Slowly. I don't know if it's deliberate. Maybe, maybe she wanted position 10. It's not unheard of. We have seen in BTCC in the past that people have uh, done what they can to get that position. I don't think that looked like that, though. She certainly wouldn't have uh, slowed down enough to allow Nick McCarran to get close in the way that he has if uh, if it was a deliberate move. Well, uh, Wiles right on the back of Andreas Katz, but I'm not going to be away around. There's only one corner left in this race. Czepileski will take his second win of the day. Cats through the final corner. Wild will have to settle the third again. But once again, he outfinishes Simon Field, so uh, takes more points there. Here is uh, Smolenski coming over the line. Field made it down to half a second in the end, but has to settle for fifth. Uh, and that's Terry coming over the line in sixth place. Laidler finishes seventh for Team CQR Fanta. Dalton 8th, Bond is not coming, uh, Kai Barker, sorry, P10. Kai Barker's come home in ninth, and then Bond comes home in 10th, because we've... I well, wonder. We've, we've just, well, the, the positions have changed on the monitor, so Laura Bond's indicated as being in ninth place, but do we not just see her come across in 10th? It's still showing as P10 for me. And on the results screen, in fact, she is, so that we'll go with 10th. It's a wonder, don't you? Could she sell us a little fib? She, was she telling us porky pies? And we just talked about uh, Laura Bond. We, we spoke with her at the end of the last race, and she said that uh, she'll be trying to finish as high as she could. Seventh place start. So she dropped three places in the race, but towards the end, it did look like... It did look like she might have given up that Sandbagged place a little bit. To, well, I mean, of course, as we, yeah, as we said, P3, reverse... You know, race three, rather, reverse grid... That now puts Laura Bond on pole, Kai Barker second, Andy Dalton third, Russell Laidler fourth, Adam Terry fifth, Simon Fields sixth, Smolensky seventh, Richard Wild eighth, Andreas Katz ninth, and Stelian Chebelevsky tenth. Um, that gives Laura a pole, and we've seen that this is not a track that is di easy to overtake on. Laura actually saying after the race, she she thought the race had finished, so slowed down. Oh, so she <laughs> she slowed down a lap early. Yes, obviously blonde. Um, so, yeah, but either way, she's there, she's no <laughs> pole for the next race. Wow, that, yep, yeah, so, I don't believe that for a second, I think she went for the pole. <laughs> <laughs> if it were, we'll have to give her the benefit of the doubt, because we can't be judgmental in the commentary box, that would be outrageous. But It would be. We saw her on pole position, actually it was, it was second place on the grid at Okayama last season, and held it. She took the lead, she held the lead for most of the race, and just got pit by Adam Terry right at the very end. 
and came home second in her best finish ever in the British Touring Car Championship so should be interesting to see what happens when she starts on pole position I think Laura can win this this is a difficult difficult track to overtake on those guys that normally fight their way through pretty quickly the likes of Chepalevsky and Katz I just don't see him being able to do it I wonder if we might be able to get a quick word with 8th place finisher now Andy Half Dalton five. are you there Andy? I am yes hello uh, sorry to interrupt your conversation Andy <laughs> Andy Dalton for team drive call 8th position must be thrilled with that uh, yeah, reverse grid. We're going to get a decent spot, hopefully, and uh, and then we can push on for a, a top five finish in the second race. And you did seem to be quicker out on track than Russell Laidler, who was just in front of you, but no way round. Uh, no, just just no grip in the tyres at that point in the race. You know, um, if I'd have had more time to put a move on him, maybe. But with Laura behind me, I I, I had to settle for the position I was in. And we saw her drop a position on the last lap. Um, when she disappeared from your mirrors it obviously would have relieved a bit of pressure but that must have been surprising uh, to be honest the first time I noticed she wasn't there was going up the hill towards the kink before the corkscrew I had no idea she was gone <laughs> and yeah to be honest when, when I saw she was gone I thought yeah you know it just, just relieves a bit of pressure third place on the grid you'll be starting on the inside just behind Laura Bond where can you hope to finish in the last race uh, I can hope to finish as high as I want. <laughs> Realistically, a top five would be nice. Get some points. It's my first time out in the BTCC, so just to finish in all three races would be great. Well, that is an achievement, especially because we've seen quite a few drivers disqualified already this evening for the incident limit. Are you getting close to that limit? I think in both races I've uh, I've left room for for accidents, and you know I've tried to keep my my personal off tracks down to down to below five, so that you never do have a contact with somebody they're not you know, disqualifying me from the event well best of luck in the third race you're starting from third position so we'll be watching you right from the uh, from the off but uh, we're hoping for some good things in the last race Andy yeah no pressure then well uh, thanks Chris <laughs> no problem uh, I'll speak to hope you later hope to give you a good show see you mate that's Andy Dalton there for Drive Call no relation no relation, uh, just mentioning Matt Dalton, who is in the commentary <laughs> box with me, is not the same person as Andy Dalton, nor is he related. Uh, his teammate, Tom Stanley, has not had the best run of form. I'm wondering if we might be able to get a quick word of Tom Stanley as well. We'll give it a go. Um, Tom, are you there? Yes, I am. Evening, Tom. Um, not the best result for you this evening. Um, where did it all go wrong? first race we've got on. <laughs> um, I don't know uh, first lap at the courts through I spun with uh, I think it was a pre-tech car and then a bit further down it was quite hectic between about four other cars really and um, yeah it just kind of went on someone bumped me onto the gravel try to avoid I think the other the P-Tech car again and you know I hit him and I think he got disqualified so as I am very sorry but you know couldn't avoid anything and from here, it's going to be a difficult proposition, isn't it, in the third race? But you're looking to move past as many people as possible. What's your what's your best case scenario there? Best case scenario is not to spin it uh, to um, like for at the moment, really. Um, but you know, I do quite good in the first corner, first lap, first race. I did um, a nice little move around the outside where everyone was sticking to the inside. So you know, did a nice little inside move in the second race. So you know, a few more of those this race, I should be all good. Well, this is your first outing in the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, it's your first outing here on BSR TV as well, so uh, thanks for that. But what's it like coming into this series? There's a lot of fast drivers in here, and how have you found the first meet and adjusting to this type of racing? Is it not, there is a lot of fast drivers. You know, I've been doing up practice servers and whatnot, and you know, doing practice races with some of the guys. You know, I am quick. You know, support races like this, um, Skip Barber and the Four Spec Racer, I was quite quick. I was running consistently, but you know, it's just adapting to the people around you. Don't worry about the fast guys because they're sure you're going to be making a mistake. You just got to worry about your race. And at the moment, I'm not really doing that much to look after my race. I'm just you know trying to avoid other people's incidents really. Well, we hope you can stay out of trouble in the third race and make up as many positions as possible. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Tom. Thank you. Tom Stanley there for Drive Cool and... Sounds confident, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? I mean, I like his style a lot. Um, he has been unfortunate so far, 
he got the black flag in the first race and sounds like he has a few incidents with other cars in the second race being near the back we didn't quite get to catch up with that but we'll have to keep an eye on him in the third race because he should be able to move up from there right we see well you, you know he says he's uh, says he's quick enough we'll have to see uh, if he is but more importantly we'll have to see if anybody can have a, actually have a half a chance at overtaking well, we're hoping to see a lot more overtaking in this final race and i think you know judging by the previous races we have seen chepelevsky start on reverse grid 10th quite a lot because he often wins the second race he does tend to go hell for leather doesn't he and get up to as high a position as he can in the first few laps I think it, the first couple of laps is where everybody's bunched up that's your best chance is to make up as many places as you can so we'll see him put, pull out all the stops in the third race or not as the case may be that's coming up in a few minutes here on BSR TV if you're watching on Twitch TV don't go anywhere it will retune for you and if you're watching on YouTube just advance to the next video round 18 coming your way very soon for now we're going to take a quick break thanks for tuning in